and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering a handful of cognitive assessments that are commonly used in skilled nursing facilities as well as acute rehab settings in hospitals. Depending on the location that you're in and the setting itself, the assessments that you're going to use are going to be different, but I think this is a good but I think this is going to be a great overview for all of you who just want to get a good idea on what kind of assessments are out there and what they look like. So I checked in with two of my OT friends who are in these settings and they shared what they're using right now and they're actually the same as the ones that I was using back when I was doing my field work during my graduate program so I don't think much has changed which is good. So let's get started. For those of you who are unfamiliar with these settings, both acute rehab and skilled nursing facilities are very fast paced and intensive. Acute rehab settings are more intensive because it typically is when people have come out of a surgery or had a recent traumatic injury. So they're staying in acute rehab for three hours of therapy, five days a week. So it is pretty intensive. They're probably getting OT, PT, you know, all the above or a mix of them. So this is in an inpatient hospital setting. And then a skilled nursing facility is considered a subacute rehab setting. And that is less intensive than an acute rehab setting. Let's start off with the MOCA. The MOCA is short for Montreal Cognitive Assessment, and according to their website, this is a brief cognitive screening tool for mild cognitive impairment. I used to love using the MOCA when I was doing my acute rehab fieldwork setting, and it was so great because it was such a short and effective tool for a simple screening assessment, and we used to use it all the time. It used to be free and accessible online, but now, unfortunately, you do need to go through certification to be able to utilize it and it does cost money to get certified. So I'm not sure how long this is going to stick around or if people are going to continue using it to the same amount, but that does change things for a lot of us therapists because we're going to have to pay out of pocket to use it. So there you go. But I really like this one because it covers a lot of different domains. So here is what the assessment looks like. So it's only one page and I believe now you can also use their online or like digital app to um, test as well. But it covers visual spatial, executive functioning, as well as naming, memory, attention, language, abstraction, and delayed recall. Oh, also orientation. So it's really covering a lot of different domains for our vision and how we're processing this information, remembering things, executive functioning, sequencing. So I find it really effective. All you'll need is a pencil. So there are sections where you can assess the patient by just asking them to do something or label like, what is this? It's a lion. This is a rhino. And there are some sections where they have to draw. So under visual spatial, you see that it says copy the cube. Next to it says draw a clock 10 past 11. So it has a lot of different sections. So I appreciate how comprehensive it is. You just add up all the points that they get and it's very easy to score. Next is the trail making test. And this is also known as TMT. This one is a really fast and easy one, and the MOCA actually has a component with this in it. So it's already incorporated in the MOCA, but this is one you can do separately, which is very easy and free to access. Parts to this assessment. The first part is you ask the patient to connect all of the numbers in ascending order. So starting from one, find two, find three, and connect the dots. And after that, the second one is a little bit harder, and you can see it in two different languages here as an example. You have to alternate between numbers and letters in the alphabet. So you go from one, A, two, B, three C. And so there's a lot of working components to this because you have to remember the ascending order for both of the sets of numbers and letters, but you also have to remember and recall where you're at. So there's a lot of working memory, visual components, and you sequencing as you go along. So this is a great little cognitive assessment. And I like that it's free and just very accessible. The scoring is very straightforward. So the they have it as like a average deficient rule of thumb. So since you're timing it, 
you, you know, have up to a certain amount of time to complete it or you just stop the timer when the person is done. And so here is the average for the trail A and B. If the person is taking longer than this average, then that means that there's a deficiency there. Next one that we're going to be looking at is the simple digit modalities test, which is also abbreviated to SDMT. And I think this is the first one that I've looked at with you guys that has a manual. It's for people who are eight years and older, which is nice because you can use it with the pediatric population as well. And according to the website that sells this, it tests for cerebral dysfunction. And it's really nice because this test can be completed within five minutes or less, which is really great for the fast-paced acute care setting. And I find this assessment really fun, and a lot of you guys probably did this as children in fun little workbooks and at school. So the idea of the simple digit modalities test is to basically provide the person with a key where the symbols equate to a certain number. And so basically you're decrypting the code by matching up this symbol equals this number and filling in the blanks. I think that this is also really great for addressing visual difficulties as well because you're seeing a lot of near point copying where the person has to scan around for the correct key and um, translate that number and write it down. So you also get to see a visual and fine motor piece as well as that cognition. This one is called the Stroop Color and Word Test, which also comes with a manual that I will link in the description box. This is another really quick and easy way to look for neuropsychological deficits and it is standardized so that's really nice because you can look at the standard deviations and the means. This version comes in a adult version as well as a children's one. So the adult one is for 15 years and up and the children's one is from age 5 to 14. Again, this one's very quick and effective to use, so it only takes five minutes to administer. And you will be given a sheet with various words on it that are in different colors. And the idea of this assessment is to see how you do with word naming involving an interference, which is going to be the color of the words. As you can see in the picture, all of these words are colored but they are also words that are colors. <laughs> so that is the interference that you have to work through. You are timed and you need to read as many of the words, not the color of the words, as fast as you can. I just tried it a couple times to give you guys an example and I don't think I can even do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna try from the top row and just read the words. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm overthinking it. Green, blue, yellow, blue, blue, red, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, green, red, <laughs> yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, red, blue, green, blue, yellow, red. Oh my goodness, that was wrong. That was blue and red. So there you go. Try this out and see how you do because clearly I don't know if I would pass this one. <laughs> So that concludes my cognitive assessment review for today. I recognize that there are so many different assessments that could be used in acute care settings like this. So this is not going to cover all of them, but I think these are a few very popular ones that you will come across pretty often in your field work or in your future job or current job settings. So I hope this is helpful. I am also going to attach my video for the Allen Cognitive Levels and the ACLS in the description box below. This is also a popular assessment that is frequently used in skilled nursing facility and acute rehab settings. So it's a separate video because it's a lot of content on its own. So you can go ahead and check that out if you guys would like. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves and you are all well. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.